Hi, this is the Compass Podcast, where we connect the divine to the everyday. My name is Ryan Dunn. And I'm Michelle Maldonado. And we are connecting the divine to everyday things like technology, specifically artificial intelligence. Ooh. Michelle, this may be like a short question with a long detailed answer. So we'll just try to sum this up as best <laughs> we can. But how have you used AI so far? So I've given it several shots, both uh -huh. personally and professionally. I'll start professionally. Um, I just wanted to see what it could do. So I'd be asking, I've asked questions like generate goals for my job to see if mm. it could. It could, which is really freaky since it doesn't exactly know what I do. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it could tell the rest of, you know, like sometimes people ask us what our job descriptions are and we're a little bit like, uh, yeah. So mm -hmm. <laughs> could it define that for you? It almost could. I had hmm. to do minimal editing, uh, which really freaked me out. Like, how, how does it know? Um, and personally, I've used it, um, a couple of friends who aren't very tech savvy have asked me, like, hey, you know, I need a cover letter or I need, um, uh, a, a summary of a book, you know, things like that. So I, I generate it for them. And the cover letter one really let me know what this thing is capable of because all I told it was a very vague description and um, the, was, they, they, they need, wanted a position at the university so I typed in the university and it was so specific to that job role because mm. I guess I just pulled the job link Okay, and it was very very specific and it was awesome I was like ooh let me have File this in the in the memory bank, like in an unsettling way. Like, oh, it knows too much, or are you, yes. <laughs> are you intimidated a, in that regard? Okay, a, a, yeah, it knows too much. Like, I'm I'm fascinated by technology, but I keep finding myself when I'm in front of it and I see its capabilities, um, I kind of like shy away. Like, mm. this is too too much. But maybe it's because we've all seen the movies and it's part right. of pop culture <laughs> to fear the AI and the robots. So I'm trying to keep that in check, too. Yeah, I, I found it useful as like a jumping off point for a lot of things. But mm -hmm. I've been a little slow to to really adapt it full on word for word in in what it's often provided. And we're going to get into that a little bit I, in, in this episode, actually. Uh, we're going to explore how AI can or cannot help us on our spiritual journeys and, and really help us to like inform our own spiritual or Christian practice. And so we're going to hear from a pastor whose church has kind of gone through a few processes with AI. Um, hear some warnings from other Christian practitioners about what, uh, what AI can and cannot do. Uh, but I wanted to start off this episode in exploring the possibilities and limitations of AI by letting AI just run wild on this thing. <laughs> <laughs> and specifically, I wanted it to make my life easy and provide a podcast script. So uh, it has done that. And in this case, it has done it without any editing at all, Michelle. So uh, all we right. can, uh, we, we're going to roll into this thing. Um, I asked it specifically for... Uh, a two-person podcast script relating AI to uh, the practice of Christian spirituality. And, um, and this is what it turns out. And I do have to note, this was, this was fascinating to me. So I tried several different AI content producing platforms and they all, I gave them all the same prompt. They all turned out the exact same thing. So mm. I think what's what's going on there is that we have these uh, engines that are built on top of the same platform, which is probably, mm -hmm. you know, chat GPT. And they're yeah. they're just finding other ways to to implement that for something specific. So so actually, I think what we're using here is the script that uh, specifically came out of chat GPT. So let's roll into it. This is AI produced Compass Podcast. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Compass Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Dunn, and today we'll be diving into the fascinating topic of artificial intelligence in Christian spirituality. In this episode, 
We'll explore how AI intersects with religious beliefs, its potential impact on Christian practices, and the ethical considerations surrounding its development. Joining us today is Michelle Maldonado, an expert in theology and technology. Welcome to the show, Michelle. Thank you, Ryan. It's a pleasure to be here. To get us started, could you provide us with an overview of what artificial intelligence actually is? Skynet. No, I'm just kidding. That's me. <laughs> Uh, absolutely. Artificial intelligence, or AI, refers to the development of computer systems that can perform tasks typically requiring human intelligence. These systems are designed to analyze data, make decisions, learn from experience, and even interact with humans in the way that's reminiscent of human conversation. That's impressive! Now, I, I feel like we should have backed up, like, like I should have introduced you as Dr. Michelle Maldonado. I mean, even <laughs> though it, like your doctorate is not <laughs> in that mm -hmm. specific topic, uh, still, as long as we're platforming you as the expert here, uh, Dr. Michelle Maldonado, how does <laughs> AI intersect with Christian spirituality? Are there any particular areas where these two realms come together? Indeed, there are several points of inter intersection. Uh, one such area is the use of AI and religious practices. For example, we've seen chatbots programmed with religious knowledge that can answer theological questions or provide spiritual advice. Ooh, that's weird. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> addi additionally, AI can assist in studying religious text and even generate sermons or prayers based on patterns and themes found within these texts. So a little tangent here from our AI produced script. This is where like human creativity comes in that you just can't replace, I, I think, because uh, one of the things that you mentioned in there, Michelle, was that there are chatbots programmed with religious knowledge that can answer theological questions. And one of the very popular ones is on Twitch right now. It's just called ask, ask Jesus, ask <laughs> underscore Jesus. And um, it is kind of cool in that you have this AI portraying the part of Jesus and you can ask it questions. Um, and some of the questions are just meant to be silly or funny, or they're trying to trip up the algorithm in the AI a little bit. So people ask it for help with homework or to retell a biblical story with silly names. And <laughs> one of the amazing things though, that I, I find about uh, Jesus reacting to those things is that AI Jesus, hopefully like, real Jesus never runs out of patience. Like you always get a legit answer from, from AI Jesus. It's never just like your question is stupid and I'm not going to answer that. <laughs> yeah, but it also always kind of pivots to make some kind of point about a spiritual truth. So I have a clip for us to consider on that where somebody's asking it just kind of an off the wall question and you can, Listen for the way that it makes the, the Jesus juke here. And we do kind of have to get on a beyond, if you're watching the video, like the representation of <laughs> Jesus. Michelle, you, you mentioned that. Uh, He's it, paler maybe, than me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe not the most accurate. <laughs> Jesus, what is the best food for the human body? Hello, Metallica 29. It's great to see your curiosity about health. The best foods for the human body are usually those that are natural, like fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and lean proteins. It's also important to remember that balance and moderation in all things are crucial. Consider a rich variety of foods, abundant in nutrients, fiber, and good fats. But perhaps equally important is our spiritual sustenance, feeding our hearts and minds with love, kindness, and positive thoughts. Have a blessed day. It made it such a creative turn, though, right? <laughs> it yeah, that's this, really like, creative. Hey, not only do you need to feed your body, but here comes the Jesus juke. You have to feed your spirit <laughs> as well. <laughs> so I was playing around with some of these other AI uh, Jesus representations. There's a there's an app where you can text Jesus, and and I did a little bit of that. And this is where I, I feel like it's important to bring up a warning about what these um, these apps are capable of. So we just saw something that's kind of impressive in the way that it is creative in taking probably an out of context and silly question and, and making a spiritual turn to it. 
But also, sometimes the information that it provides, it sounds authoritative, but it can be a little incomplete. So I used a Text with Jesus app, and I asked it a question. I said, a lady on the street stopped me and asked for money. How much should I give her? And Jesus came back and said, it's wonderful that you're considering helping someone in need. In, spiritual, in, in situations like this, it's important to be compassionate, compassionate and generous. In the Bible... I talk about caring for the poor and those less fortunate. One particular verse that comes to mind is Matthew 5.42, where I said, give to the one who asks you and do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. While there isn't a specific amount mentioned in this verse, it emphasizes the spirit of giving with a willing heart. I encourage you to consider your means and give what you can without causing financial strain on yourself. Remember, it's not about the exact amount but rather the love and compassion behind your gesture. May God bless your generosity. Uh, star emoji. So that looks cool, right, Michelle? I mean, kind of... That's a decent answer. Yeah, I found sound advice. However, the scripture that it references is pulled out of context. So uh. I see that lesson in Matthew 5 as a way of overcoming evil and greed. And it's not really about so much about lending a helping hand. Um, mm -hmm. I think that Matthew 5 speaks to overcoming evil with goodness and love. So it's specifically talking about somebody who's suing you and, mm -hmm. and responding to, to that suit. It's not really, I don't know, in this case, in that Matthew 5 case, Matthew 542, about generosity for the poor or downtrodden. So some Brownie caveats points. there. Hmm? Yeah. And brownie points for Jesus using emojis. Yeah, right? Yes. It is striking, though, when it refers itself to itself in the first person. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, like in an unsettling way. Like, I had a hard time actually saying that. So, I don't hear it. <laughs> My... So, th that's fun playing around with uh, Ask Jesus apps. And we'll link to those on the show notes page. You can explore those yourself. Right? Uh, Michelle, shall we continue on with our AI generated script? Yep, let's do it. Okay, I think it's my turn here. Uh, that's interesting. Oh, wait. Yes, okay, yeah, that, that's it. where we are. Yeah, that's interesting. However, there might be concerns <laughs> among Christians about the role of AI in religious activities. What are some potential and ethical considerations that arise in this context? Absolutely. Uh, ethical considerations are crucial to address. One key concern is the potential devaluation of human interaction and experience. While AI can offer guidance, it cannot truly replace the role of personal relationships, community, and spiritual connection between humans and God. It's important to strike a balance between utilizing AI tools and maintaining the fundamental aspects of Christian spirituality. That's a valid point. I mean, for real, that's a valid point. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, looking at a broader perspective, we know that AI has the potential to disrupt various industries and create significant societal changes. How might this affect Christian beliefs and practices? Well, AI advancements can amplify Christian outreach, allowing messages of love, compassion, and faith to reach wider audiences through platforms like social media and online communities. However, there's also the risk of AI being programmed with biases or uh, distorted religious content, which could impact the understanding and interpretation of Christian teachings. Additionally, the integration of AI into worship services or rituals must be done thoughtfully, ensuring it doesn't overshadow the, the core element of Christian spirituality. And we're going to hear all about that shortly with our friend Jay Cooper. But uh, first, we'll continue with our AI generated script. Absolutely. Finding that balance is crucial. As we conclude this conversation, what advice would you give to our listeners who may be grappling with the implications of AI on their Christian beliefs? I would advise listeners to approach AI with a critical mindset evaluating its potential benefits and dangers in light of their own spiritual understanding, keeping an open dialogue within their faith communities and seeking guidance from religious leaders can provide valuable insight. 
Ultimately, Christians should remember that while AI may offer tools for knowledge and guidance, the essence of Christian spirituality lies in personal relationships, stewardship, and living out the teachings of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Dr. Maldonado, for shedding light on this thought-provoking topic. It's been a pleasure having you on the show today. Thank you, Ryan, for the opportunity. I enjoy our conversation and hope it sparks further discussion among your listeners. I do, uh, man, I want a little more feeling when you say I enjoyed our conversation. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was trying to be an AI. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gotcha. I was just playing the part, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, we did... Uh, we did want to see how this played out in Christian community, specifically what the, the AI script just brought up about um, putting AI into practice in the context of worship services mm -hmm. and how it relates to ritual and um, even even some of the theological aspects. So we were able to talk with Pastor Jay Cooper from Violet Crown Church in Austin, Texas, about what their congregation is up to in, um, in, well, exploring AI and actually using an AI generated service. So let's hear some of his thoughts. Pastor Jay Cooper has been playing around with artificial intelligence and its implications for the church community. And your context, Jay, is Violet Crown City Church in Austin, Texas. You've been doing a, a series, a sermon series, worship series with artificial intelligence. What inspired this series? I think playing around with is an accurate term for us to get started <laughs> this morning. As a um, someone who is trained in seminary and not beyond that, I think um, my experience is somewhat limited. However, the last month or so has been a crash course and um, a, a great learning experience for me. So what inspired this time together, we're doing a three-week series on AI and God, exploring the nature of truth and what is sacred, the potential and the pitfalls of AI being used in a ministry setting. And so I got the idea maybe six months ago. We have some techie type software developers in the church, and I just like to pepper them with questions. And then seeing online kind of the proliferation of AI and just thinking, wow, this is going to really be part of every aspect of our life. And then naturally my mind goes to, what would it look like to use this in worship? You know, just your basic <laughs> pastor thought on a Monday. <laughs> right. So, How can this make my life easier? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah, I mean, I'll get into that in a little bit. I actually have strong feelings against using any form of AI going forward mm -hmm. in sermon oh, writing. Okay. However, to me, y'all, the church seems to be light years behind generally on issues like this. Yeah we react with fear or we react with that won't affect me. Like within these church walls, society should have a limited influence. Well, I could not disagree more. And so if there's an issue that's impacting the world, we really need to bring that into the church. I think it was Carl Bart, who said back in the day, we need to preach with a Bible with one hand and a newspaper in the other. So mm -hmm. let's update that to say a Bible in one hand and a smartphone yeah, in the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there you go. Let's see what discussion we can start in the church and even take that step of what would it look like if we brought AI into worship leading and okay. then cue mushroom cloud <laughs> <laughs> well let's follow up with that then so you, you did a uh, kind of an introduction on ai in one worship service and then this past mm -hmm. sunday uh so fresh we haven't seen the results yet was the ai led worship service how did it go that's a great question. I'm still <laughs> Long pause. <laughs> formulating the, the response in my mind. Okay, so 
the first few weeks of planning it were very fun. You know, chat GPT, create an entire worship service that includes children's message, call to worship, communion liturgy, sermon, mm-hmm. an original song based on the sermon. And then, you know, following up with some prompts on each of those. Uh, so very fun, great conversations with people in the church. And then we come to yesterday, um, service time, and we've got like a no- local news reporter there. We're doing interviews. The story's kind of gotten out on several um, lo- local news outlets. And it's all kind of amped up, and we have a good number of visitors And I tried to preface the service about what we're doing, but then just let AI take the lead. Every word that was said for the next 45 or so minutes was AI generated. And honestly, I started feeling more and more uncomfortable as the service went along. Mm -hmm. To to pray... um, it, it started feeling more inauthentic, especially the sermon. And then my big worry, as people were, you know, kind of giggling here and there and all that is, oh, God, am I making a mockery of Sunday morning worship? Mm-hmm. However, we had a big conversation as a church afterwards. We all gathered and... The, the response, that was not necessarily people's response. They thought it was a fantastic way to start a conversation about AI in the church. And they said, Jay, your job is safe. <laughs> and <laughs> which, you know, would have been the mother of all regrets. My wife right. kind of casually <laughs> kind of yeah. mentioned, yeah. like, what? Why Why would you, like, what if this is the Sunday they realize, wow, Jay's salary could be used for a lot of other things. <laughs> mm. um, but, so, a couple people I was shocked said they were able to worship. Mm. And a couple said they thought it was going to be a train wreck, and it was not. Mixed, mixed results. I, I would probably say I had the biggest evolution of... Um, this is going to be awesome to, okay, this is not something we'll be doing again. Now, I don't want to totally close myself off to what would AI look like in other ministry aspects, but Sunday morning worship um, is not one we'll continue with. Were there any elements of worship that just really (laughs) felt out of place. They were total splinters to the flow of the the, the <laughs> worship vibe. I don't know. <laughs> so chat GPT is clearly very influenced by the prompts we give it. So I tried to do a prompt that was like, give us a traditional call to worship, a progressive mm-hmm. communion liturgy. And and I thought all that was very interesting. It responded well. The the jokes were so <laughs> In chat GPT's defense, I did say things like work in some jokes to lighten the mood. Mm-hmm. The jokes. Okay. This one joke I thought was actually legit. It said, I, I was having chat GPT for the sermon, do a self critique. I said, generate a sermon uh, about how do Christians identify and discern truth in a world where AI is blurring truth. Oh. So, AI is kind of doing a self-critique, and one of the jokes it put out there was, uh, like the old saying, don't trust everything you read on the internet, especially if it's in Comic Sans. And I thought that was actually a legit joke, and the congregation just groaned. So, And then there would be transitions like, but then in all seriousness, folks, almost like a, is this mic on, like stand-up comedian? So those felt a little jarring, uh, and the the sermon probably felt the most out of place because mm-hmm. it was just um, your traditional three point sermon, information, and 
fairly, fairly dry. Mm-hmm. So that was the part where, you know, obviously no personal examples kind of lacking in soul, kind of the invitation or challenge. Yeah. So you mentioned that you also did communion with the AI, because I, I, that for me, I don't know, doing communion with Skynet, uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> what right, was that yeah. like? My, yeah, my friend was like, you better wear galosh- galoshes because you are going to be struck down. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, that part, the liturgy was actually good and interesting. So we are a open and affirming community of faith. So I said, write a progressive communion liturgy. And it said, this table is open to people of all ages, nations, sexual orientations. And I thought, wow. all right, so this is a really um, beautiful understanding of in- inclusive grace. All are invited. So mm-hmm. I thought, you know, way to go, old chat buddy you you nailed this one we did serve communion in the same way we always do and so i I think that felt familiar enough to people Mm -hmm. that it wasn't like i was dressed like in a a robot outfit or something crazy crazy like that Uh, they just received um and so that was not as sacrilegious as i would expect well, in all the research that you've been doing leading up to this series, what has been something that surprised you? I think the probably its ability to mimic human prayer. Now, it's still put in words like, we beseech thee. That's not a general <laughs> part of my Sunday morning vocabulary. And it, it uses words that I generally are not part of my theology, like our final victory um, and kind of, you know, emphasis on sovereignty. So I I guess the, the most surprising thing is AI is, from my understanding, just a a reflection of humanity. And so Mm -hmm. it's scraping all of our biases, our prejudice, our, our, faithfulness, our prayers that uh, are a little messy. And so it it knocked AI down from its pedestal, I would say, for me. It, mm-hmm. you know, it really, God, what a interesting and fascinating technology. But it's it's got a ways to go. Um, and also, I guess another s- surprise is it does not come across as a Skynet type thing. It's more like a kind of a CP3O kind of like kind of an annoying, (laughs) (laughs) annoying sidekick. (laughs) That is a fantastic analogy. (laughs) That speaks like an infinite number of languages. Although it should be noted that I did ask it to write a prayer in speaking in tongues. And it said it could not. That speaking <laughs> tongues is a deeply personal experience. <laughs> so I uh, tried to bait it, but... Um, yeah. Oh. Yeah. That is a fascinating answer for an AI. Have that it wouldn't... Been, said it would... We couldn't possibly be the first ones that have done this. Have you heard of other <laughs> churches that are experimenting? There was a church in Germany that uh, did an AI-led service as well. I I think they kind of went through the similar process as you did with uh, asking ChatGPT to generate the worship order. And um, and, and I believe that the results were somewhat similar. That Like they felt Mm -hmm. afterwards like none of our, we're not going to be replaced by the robots anytime soon. Yeah, there was just something missing there, you know. There was. And, you know, what our congregation members identified it as is they're just calling it the soul. Mm -hmm. And I think that's part of what I was trying to get at. You know, I tried to make it very clear that this is not just like clickbait or some, you know, cheesy, gimmicky event. But we're we're talking about the nature of what is what is sacred. Like, for instance, 
if if I pray for you both, it feels hopefully authentic and then it has soul. If if AI generates a prayer for you, because it doesn't have soul, does that inauthenticate the prayer? Per, perhaps so. Maybe most people would just easily say, absolutely, that is a worthless prayer. I'm just trying to see how we can wrestle with those kind of questions. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, so with with that question in mind, then, like, what have you learned about AI in the, the spiritual journey? Like, can it inform our spiritual journey? Have you found through this series that it has impacted the, the practice of your faith community? That's a great question. I, I think my ready answer is no. It has not impacted them in a way that will affect their day-to-day spiritual practices. My hope is that it's planting seeds in me as well, that, okay, I took this time to try to find, experience something sacred in something that our assumption is has no uh, sacred component at all, So then what if I carry that forward and in my workplace or anywhere else, am I then practicing looking for the sacred in a place I would never look for it before? Or in my neighbor who's wearing that red hat that makes me just like go bonkers in terms of politics. I would not expect, now this is just an example (laughs) um, of... (laughs) of someone that I would have difficulty aligning with politically. But then what if, okay, Jay, you assume you won't find the sacred in this conversation. Start looking for it. You know, don't limit God because that's Mm. what I'm doing every time Mm. I make these assumptions. Well, you mentioned a strong warning about using AI in your sermon preparation. (laughs) What did you want to unpack there? (laughs) <laughs> um, say that again the strong but you had some strong thoughts about <laughs> moving oh, forward yes. with AI in, in sermon preparation so you know messiness is part of the human condition mm. and I really believe that that needs to find its way into the sermon So the sermon, more than anything, has to be a reflection of the pastor's inner wrestling and also knowing their congregation. Like when I'm preparing a message, I'm like, so-and-so is going through a divorce. God, they are shattered. So-and-so has just experienced this incredible breakthrough moment with God. Those things all need to work their way into the message. And I hope it's spirit-led in a way that speaks to someone. And so I think through sermon prep, God is trying to do something in the pastor's life as a spiritual discipline. And I think the congregation needs to see that this is not polished. And Hmm. the way the pastor prays is in a way that gives them permission, oh, okay, I don't have to say it in an mm-hmm. eloquent way. I can just pray. And so if I found out I were part of a service where this pastor had prepared an AI sermon, I would feel a little duped. And yeah, I, I could not, in my good integrity or it, trying to have good integrity, preach a sermon that is anyone else's, Mm -hmm. Um, whether I find it online or whether I generate it by chat GPT. So sometimes Mm -hmm. if I just can't come up with anything for Sunday and it's a a terrible week and there was a funeral and everything, I just do my absolute best. But the thought of finding something online would be, um, I, I could not deliver that message. 
Yeah. Um, in our work, we hear a lot about uh, communicating authenticity. And, and it right. sounds like this really leans into that, that it, it is better to be authentic than it is to be polished. <laughs> right. Mm. I, I, I hope so. I hope mm. so. Like, in, in your, would you say you've ever heard someone preach a sermon without naming names that you thought was maybe found elsewhere, so to speak? Hmm. Uh, well, in a way that, I don't know, I, I've heard people drop anecdotes that are okay, kind right, of, uh, right. yeah. You know, oh, those have been around the block a few times. Like I've heard those. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And that can be a little disjointing in a way. Yeah. yeah. It can. It was removed. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that's what the congregation responded. And I thought it, they shared some very kind words that what was missing is that they appreciate that I let them into my heart. I share from my heart and I try to ask some probing questions. And so both of those were missing from the service. And Michelle, as I was telling Ryan a minute ago, I think the, you know, uh, the big, uh, before you popped in, the big take home is, you know, I think, you know, my job continues to be safe in such a way that I think, Maybe it was the best thing I could have done, and I'll receive a bump in salary <laughs> this, this year because um, I, I think it was helpful to show that this is not where our congregation mm-hmm. wants to go. Yeah, and using the, the AI, too, it, you can't control what theology they're pulling from. Um, so that could get really messy and really tricky. Yes, Exactly. Although one guy in our congregation was like, geez, Jay, AI pulled more biblical references than you usually do in your <laughs> sermons. And I was like, you, this is your last Sunday with us. Thanks for, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for <laughs> Oh, I should well, say that, you know, when it ran on the local news, we were all kind of lamenting that it had, it um, didn't have emotion to it the Mm -hmm. ai someone i don't know who it is but they work with ai and ministry emailed me and they said here are the prompts you need to give it in order to bring out emotion Mm -hmm. in ai okay (laughs) so so ryan yeah i I have not responded i don't quite know i don't know give it a shot first and then yeah (laughs) right but we'll see. All right. Well, Pastor Jay, thank you so much for sharing your experiences with us and, and for kind of giving us a proxied way to, to walk through this uh, uh, this experience. Right. So it's, it's been fun to kind of watch and follow mm-hmm. along. And, and others can, too, at, um, at your church's website, uh, violetcrown.church. Um, yes. Uh, thanks so much. Thanks yes, for thank having you. me. I really enjoy you all and appreciate your work. So besides the human disconnect, there are also some ethical concerns that um, use in AI, use of AI in a Christian context can bring up. My friend Nelson Musanda from the Dell Method blog, somebody who I've talked to on my other podcast, Pastoring in the Digital Parish, little, uh, <laughs> little cha-ching <laughs> moment <plug>. there. <laughs> bing, bing. Um, and... Uh, and he wrote recently a blog post about using AI in a Christian context. And I, I thought it was really probably important of us to bring up some of the reservations that he expressed. Um, one of them being that there's a fear that AI could replace jobs that people used to do, which is, is disconcerting from a, like a justice aspect because it could lead to financial issues for people in places already struggling. And that doesn't really fit our Christian values of helping helping those in need. We're worried that AI could make social inequalities and unfairness even worse. If the data used to teach AI programs is biased, then its decisions or predictions could also be biased. This means people might be treated differently just because of their race, gender, etc., which goes against our beliefs of fairness and justice. Yeah, Pastor Jay brought up some of the ways that that we can start to see this kind of infiltrate because he talked about how the AI was presenting language that he generally wouldn't use. Sorry, what was that? <laughs> uh, okay. My phone. 
So <laughs> I'll just I'll backtrack on that. Pastor Jay brought up some instances where we can see how that might kind of infiltrate some of the ways that we use AI because he had language that was presented within his worship service that he said he wouldn't normally use. So there are, you know, if there are ideas out there that the AI is scraping predominantly, then it can, um, it can start to bleed through mm -hmm. in some of the information that we're projecting. Like I, I think about, um, pronouns and, mm -hmm. and God, yeah. right? Um, mm -hmm. Most of our Christian literature uses the masculine pronoun for God. And, and yet, mm -hmm. you know, that's something that I, I've kind of moved away from. But, you know, we can begin to see like how this starts to repeat itself um, yeah. in, you know, exclusively using he and him for for uh, reference to God. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, and there, there are other ways. I mean, that's just an example of ways that we yeah. can see like how, how maybe um, thoughts that aren't based in justice or fairness can start to bleed into uh, what AI is representing. And then, of course, a third concern is that AI could be misused, like creating weapons that can act independently or that can spy on people. And this can lead to harm and go against the Christian belief of treating people with respect. And kindness, for sure. Mm -hmm. AI is like a chainsaw. Sounds very mm. aggressive. <laughs> it does. It can, <laughs> it can clear out an area like a forest and make room for something new, like housing development. Um, tools can negatively affect people uh, and the environment if you don't use them safely and responsibly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, just the warning that like part of the message is the tool that we need to be aware of. So. All these come from, again, from Nelson Musanda's Dell Method mm -hmm. blog, and we'll link to that article on the um, on the show and notes. The the concerns in general for AI, not just in the church but outside too. Like these AIs have a turn off button that these companies created because mm -hmm. we've already seen. Um, I think it was Google's AI that got too smart, it freaked everybody out, and they turned it off. Yeah, was that the example that? Um, well, or, or was it one on Twitter where uh, they they had used yep. an AI, yeah, uh -huh. mm -hmm. and then went off the rails into, yeah. I mean, it, it was like into racist territory, wasn't mm -hmm. it, where somebody had really kind of yeah. usurped it, uh, you know, and it needed to be pulled quickly, yeah. Yeah, so we're not to the point yet, are we, where uh, <laughs> where humans are, are superfluous. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we've kind of laid out the limitations of AI use in general, but specifically how it relates to our spiritual journeys. Michelle, moving forward, do you see some ways that AI might help influence your spiritual journey for the positive? I don't want to cut it off completely. Um, I'm, I'm thinking back of when... Um, you say maybe that was it the 80s? I, I was born in the 90s, but from other stories I've heard, when televangelism became a thing, yeah, everybody would say, like, oh, that's not a real way to have church or experience spirituality. I don't want to be a boomer no. in that yeah. sense. <laughs> I want to keep an open mind, but being careful and like these warnings that we just went through, knowing. Uh, the limitations right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I want to note that anytime new technology has been introduced, there's been that kind of kickback. So right. like even, even when they started translating the Bible into, into vernacular languages, mm -hmm. people were like, well, you know, this is, what are we going to need priests and pastors for? If, if everybody <laughs> can read the Bible and that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, in the same way, uh, and of course those roles are still prevalent, still here. And, even with AI, I think AI can be useful as like a reference, but it mm -hmm. is not a, a formative thing. So I found it uh, particularly useful in, in work when I want to learn how to better communicate with the machines, right? So there are certain parts of our lives mm -hmm. that are driven by, by machine learning, uh, specifically when we're talking about like search engine optimization mm -hmm. and getting things noticed on social media. Like AI can be really useful in telling me how to... Uh, communicate with that. Um, it can also be useful in just quickly sharing 
various ideas. So if I want to ask it a specific question like, um, you know, tell me about uh, John Wesley's thoughts on prevenient grace. It can distill mm -hmm. that pretty quickly. Yeah. It may not always be authoritative, but it's a jumping off point, right? So mm -hmm. I don't know. In a way, it's like the old-fashioned encyclopedia, just yeah. in a more interactive sense where you can ask it follow-up questions. Can be really cool and useful. Mm -hmm. I would love to see a way of developing AI that helps engage us in a spiritual practice around a um, like a specific felt need. So, you know, I have periods of anxiety. Like, can can an AI app uh, give me times to pray? Can mm -hmm. it can it maybe interface with my with my watch to tell when my heartbeat goes up and then. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Give me a little kick notification that says, hey, take a moment for mindfulness right now. <laughs> That'd be really cool. Or giving me some scripture references for times like that. That, that, that would be some like useful. Really, yeah. yeah, a really realistic, useful thing. Like, if that doesn't exist already, I bet in the next few years it will. Yeah. Yeah. So those are some of the things that get me excited about, like, drawing AI into use for spiritual practice. But also with the caveat of all the things that we've brought up here that... You know, there are parts where it's just inauthentic or where some of the information that it represents is not accurate at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've asked it a number of times to like uh, pull quotes together for me. And I found in all those cases that those quotes cannot be contributed or directly attributed to the people who the AI says oh, wow. said them. So, yeah, <laughs> which may be the case with some of these Jesus apps mm -hmm. as well. So just that caveat there. And always be mindful of the context that it comes out of. So even when it's yeah. quoting scripture, that sounds great. Uh, sometimes it may not be like the full context of the scripture. Mm -hmm. oh, cool. Well, Michelle, any final thoughts? No final thoughts other than this is not Skynet. Uh, I joke about it, but you know, obviously we've all had that fear instilled in us from pop culture. Totally. <laughs> Well, thanks so much for joining us on this spiritual journey into artificial intelligence and how it relates to um, bringing the divine into the everyday. You know, I just brought up prevenient grace, and this is the kind of grace that's present in our lives before we're cognitively aware of it. And uh, I feel like AI is such a platform for exploring prevenient grace, yeah. because even in like the the quotes from the Ask Jesus that we've represented, like it feels like there, yeah, there is a way that grace is being communicated in those spaces. The AI mm -hmm. is not aware of it. It's just parroting back things that have already mm -hmm. been written by human beings. But, um, but <laughs> grace is active in our lives as well. So uh, I hope that you're able to find that grace active in your life through the coming weeks. And Michelle and I will be back with another new episode of the Compass Podcast in a couple of weeks. In the meantime, yep. peace to you. Goodbye.